All right, Alexander, we have a big win for the Trump campaign, for Trump himself. And I also think a win for the American uh, legal system, the legal system in the United States. And that is the Supreme Court decision, unanimous, 9-2-0, throwing out the, uh, effectively throwing out the Colorado uh, uh, decision to remove Trump from the ballot. All these things need to be decided at the uh, at the congressional level. There needs to be legislation in order to pull stuff like this off. And there is no legislation in order to prevent Trump from being on the ballot. So what are your thoughts on the SCOTUS decision? I think it was entirely the correct decision. I think that most people who have been following this, um, apart from the usual the usual characters who are, are, are so consumed with um, hostility to Trump uh, 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 that, you know, they reinterpret all kinds of laws and constitutional enactments in all sorts of ways. But everybody else, all the people who, the lawyers, people like Jonathan Turley, Robert Barnes, whom we know, all of these people will say the same thing, that what Colorado did is just straightforwardly wrong. And in fact, if we go back to the Colorado Court of Appeal, three judges out of seven, all Democrats, also said this was wrong, including the Chief Justice of Colorado. I mean, they all said this is wrong. And you cannot use the 14th Amendment to do what they um you know, what the to be straightforward about it the democrats have been wanting to do but this is actually not just a constitutionally and legally correct decision in the sense that it's basically said that the colorado decision was wrong and as you rightly say all nine judges agreed it was wrong the the supreme court as it was in fully entitled to do, by the way, or I should say the majority of the Supreme Court, as they were fully entitled to do, went one step further. And they said that it's not for the states to make this decision. It's not for the courts at the moment to make that decision, you know, as to how disqualification should take place it is clearly for Congress to make that decision. Now, I am absolutely sure that is correct. I mean, I know a lot about this period of American history when the 14th Amendment was passed. I studied intensively this period of American history when I was at university. Um, so, I mean, I know all of the debates that took place then. I remember them very clearly, I know. I remember all the personalities who were involved. I remember the impact, the input that people like Salmon Chase, who was at that time the Chief Justice of the United States, had. So I mean, there is no doubt at all that this was intended to be a matter to be decided by Congress. But in saying that, the Supreme Court has in effect done something which is very important, or at least the majority of the Supreme Court have said something which is very important, which is that they have spiked this idea that Jim Jatras was talking to us about in a programme that uh, was done. we did with him recently. You remember, if you go back to what Jim Jatras said, they said, you know, that at the moment, there are no grounds for disqualification. But the moment they get one conviction, one conviction, they will seize on that and they will try to disqualify him on that basis. So what Congress is saying is you can't do that. You, you can't use just a conviction here or a conviction there to disqualify someone from a federal election. You need to have some kind of enactment by Congress to make that possible. Now that could be a new impeachment case. There's no way that that impeachment would succeed against Trump, not in this situation today. Or alternatively, you would need legislation. And um, there is no possibility that the 
uh, House of Representatives would agree to that kind of le legislation before the presidential election. So the Democrats are stuck. Even if they were to get convictions against Trump in one of the many cases that they're bringing against him, <coughs> which is, you know, possible, likely, some would say, this Supreme Court decision makes disqualification impossible before the election. Yeah, the, the Democrats are freaking out. Um, what's his name? Raskin uh, from, I believe, Maryland, Democrat from Maryland. Um, he said that he's now crafting legislation to, to try and remove Trump from the from the ballot. So, I mean, it's this is they, they, they really, really took this loss very hard because I, I think uh, I think you're right. And, and Jim Jatras was right as well, that they were very much hoping for the, the conviction in one state, just one state for this thing to hold. And then they would have carried this over to. And it wouldn't have needed that many states, Pennsylvania or just another state, and that would have been it for Trump in, in the election. Exactly, exactly. Colorado went too fast. That was the mistake that was made because Colorado made its decision before there was a conviction. And that enabled Trump to go straight to the Supreme Court. And the majority of the Supreme Court have closed off that whole option, that whole, that whole discussion. And notice how angry the three liberal judges on the Supreme Court were. They're furious that the majority said that it had to be, that the issue really can only be decided by Congress. They say that the Supreme Court went too far or, or shouldn't have gone there because that wasn't an issue before them. And notice also that Amy, whatever her name is, um, Barrett, the other one of the conservatives, Barrett, yeah. seemed to Barrett, Barrett, yeah, Comey Barrett, Amy Comey Barrett, um, was edging towards that position of the three liberals as well. But the majority, clearly and correctly, and by the way, as they're fully entitled to do, said this has to be decided by Congress, so they can get convictions against Trump, but it won't take him off, won't prevent him standing for the presidency in every state in November. And given that that was what a lot of this lawfare was ultimately about, one big purpose of the lawfare has now, um, has now gone. They can't get a conviction. That will remove him from uh, uh, that will remove him from uh, the election. It can't be done. So, so do you think that the the lawfare is as far as a tactic that that they were betting on to to prevent Trump from from running? Do you think that lawfare uh, angle is starting to to run its course and and the Democrats? And the permanent state is saying, okay, we have to change up strategies now. Or do you think they're going to stick with, with the lawfare angle? I, I, I don't think they can stop the lawfare. I mean, they, they set this train in motion. And I mean, what did they do? I mean, they can't just switch it off. They can't I, I just say, know. well, you know, Supreme Court's made this decision. I mean, so they have to, they have to take these cases, even though the cases as everybody now concedes, are making Trump electorally stronger. I mean, the, the lawfare has backfired disastrously, and the objective, the objective defined behind it, the the ultimate plan for it. You know, I mean, I think this is when we're not going too far in, this, in saying that the ultimate purpose of it has now been nullified by the Supreme Court, but. I don't think they can stop the lawfare. I don't think they can switch it off. What they will probably try to do is downplay it or you know, give it less attention from this time onwards. Uh, they haven't given up. They will look for other ways to stop Trump. I don't want to start getting into speculations about the kind of things they might do. But we saw what happened in 2016. We saw what happened in 2020. They weren't using lawfare then. Um, in 2016, they started a whole campaign 
about, you know, Russia, that might come back, who knows? They're already sort of working around that in some kind of way, will carry much less traction this time. Um, in 2020, well, I, we're not going to discuss what happened in 2020 in detail in this program because it's a sensitive topic, as everybody knows. But um, they won't give up. They will look for some other means, some other way to go after Trump. But they, they've they been foiled in what was their plan A. Their plan A, which is the one that Jim Jatras had, get a conviction... <laughs> Get him disqualified, announced disqualification in various states. Um, there would have been difficulties. The Supreme Court, we can see that part of the Supreme Court, four judges, three definitely, perhaps four, might have gone along with the theory in that case that a conviction of that nature does disqualify the president, does disqualify Trump from standing because, you know, a judicial decision is itself enough. You could have got a judgment from some court somewhere, for example, say um, in one of the federal cases, say that because all these convictions have been mounting against Donald Trump, he's clearly guilty of the insurrection or something of that kind, and falls foul of the 14th Amendment, and then we can announce an across-the-board disqualification. See, that might even have happened. That cannot happen now. So they're left now searching for their next, um, their, next, their next option. One of them, I suspect, is to run Nikki Haley as an independent. I mean, there's talk of this <laughs> also. Though yeah. I can't imagine that she's going to take votes from Trump. <laughs> He's more likely to do them from uh, uh, Joe. But there we are. So She'll definitely take money from donors. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, this yeah. This is absolutely. a long way. This is a long uh, way. To, this is a long way. This is a long way to go. I mean, we're nowhere near close to the that, election yet. But but this is a that big was my comment, Trump. and for the American that was yeah. that was my comment, and my next question to you to wrap up the video is that um, the the Plan A lawfare, and it was absolutely their Plan A, and and they they had high hopes on the lawfare working. Um, yes, the cases are now going to run their course, but as you said, they're not going to have the bite that they were hoping for. But um, but there's 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 a long way to go till November 2024, and uh, and there's no doubt that the that the Democrats in the permanent state are already planning their their next moves. They may already have their Plan B and C and D already uh, set up and and ready to go. So. Yes. Uh, you know, and we can't discount right. that. In fact, it's a, you, you, I mean, there's a certainty that that is the case. Um, it's you know, it's uh, impossible for us to try to um, um, guess what they're going to try and do. But they're going to try to do something. I mean, they're not just going to let this happen. Um, Would you have guessed Russia Gate? Would you? I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, I, you know, well, yeah, bear in mind that that article in the New York Times, you know, about the intelligence bases in in Ukraine, eff effectively came back and said, you know, this Russia gay was true. I mean, you know, uh, we know it's true because the Ukrainians provided us with information and evidence that showed that it was true. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you know, but I mean, that, that that is there in that article in the New York Times. I mean, don't pay any attention to what, you know, uh, Mueller and all of the rest said. But, you know, we have, we have the proof. We even know who the officer, the Russian military officer was who uh, was behind was it cozy bear or fancy bear or one of these agencies because the ukrainians have told us so you know it's not impossible that they'll come back with something like that i don't know what they're going to do i mean you know we mustn't as i said um try and guess in advance because well for one thing we don't want to put ideas into people's heads but uh, um you know the um what we will do as we did in 2016, as we will do in 2020 on the Duran, is we will take whatever thing they throw at us and we will look at it and we will take it apart on these programs. And, uh, um, and we, you know, we will, we will be able to explain, to, to, to clarify what we think is going on. That's all we can do. But something else is 
coming. As you absolutely rightly said, today we're still in March. November is a long way off. There's lots of things that could happen between then and now, between now and then. Yeah. The one, cer- the one certainty is they are not going to just give up. They're not just going to say, okay, let Trump run and we'll run Joe or Gavin or Michelle, whoever, but they're not going to say, let's just allow Trump to run. No No way. No, no way. I agree. I completely agree. That's the one certainty in all this. Okay, we will end it there. But Uh, but just just to finish, though, with your first point, irrespective of that, a victory for Trump, definitely, but a victory for the United States, for the Constitution of the United States, and for the American people and for the cause of elections, good elections in the United States. No doubt about it, but um, we're, we're just starting. Oh. <laughs> we're just you know, starting. Be, yeah. Be prepared for, for more to come, you know? Yeah. More to come. All right. We, we, will end, yeah, we will end it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter, X, and go to the Duran shop, 15% off all T-shirts. Take care.